Hi, Misha here, and actually, about a month, maybe even six weeks ago, I recorded an updated video on the F-16 Fighting Falcon, the Viper. This is a pretty standard one here. It's a F-16 AM. And I know that video is not out yet, but in it I said I would like to get one with the General Electric engine featured on the Block 30 and 40 and 50. I realized that all my later ones were Pratt and Whitney engines, so 32, 52, etc. And also one with a larger intake, the air intake, which would have been something like, say, a 30D or a 50D block. On top of that, and I've been wanting to get one of the Wild Weasel F-16s. I have the Wild Weasel F-4, and I recently picked up that Wild Weasel F-105. And I think it's an interesting, um, you know, assignment. First in, last out is the sanitized version. Really, you gotta be shitting me, as their motto is the more authentic version. And actually... There was an old one that was from a hobby master that Aikens found over last Christmas when they were cleaning up. It's a model that was out of print for a while, and it was from 2011, the uh, Libyan thing, Operation Odyssey Dawn, which is where the F-16 was used as a wild weasel. And I had the model in my cart. It only had one, and it sold before I checked out. So I kind of felt bad about missing that. But then, as of March 2021, I really got lucky with this one here. It's one of those that really exceeds what I expected, and I nearly didn't even pick this one up. This is the F-16CM Viper as stationed in Japan. And it didn't say in any of the literature which model it is, but as it turns out, it is a Block 50D. So it has the General Electric larger engine, which is plugged, I know, by the uh, stand, but... And it does have the larger air intake in front. And even though it wasn't advertised as such, it turned out to be in the Wild Weasel configuration. So again, I took a chance on it and really am quite happy. This is from the 35th Fighter Group, like I said, stationed in Japan, and they operate about 44 Wild Weasel F-16s. There are other groups, but they're kind of the preeminent one today. So yeah, I've done a big video kind of recounting the F-16. In this one, I just want to talk about the Wild Weasel. The The whole reason we have the General Electric and the Pratt & Whitney split that came about with the Block 3032 and the alternative uh, fighter engine program in the, in the 80s. So that way they could produce more F-16s and there could be two different engine options. So that's when the line kind of split. Before that, it was just basically using the Pratt & Whitney. And in the 80s, the Air Force's Wild Weasel was the, actually at the time quite new, F-4G. And the F-4G acquitted itself very well in Operation Desert Storm 1991. But it was an aging aircraft. In fact, into the 90s, it was the last, I'm going to set you down, <laughs> the last remaining F-4 type in the U.S. Air Force. But eventually it had to be retired out. And what to replace it with? Ultimately, as you can tell, it's the F-16. Now, interestingly, it's the F-16C, the single-seat model. The Israeli Air Force used the F-16D as a um, suppression of enemy air defense seed role, what we would call a wild weasel. So they continued to use the two-seater, much as had been done with the F-105 and F-4. The back seater was there to kind of manage all the things. But it was interesting that they went to the single seat F-16. 
Some criticized this move, saying that they needed that second pair of eyes and someone else to manage all the equipment. But the counter to that was, with modern computer technology and automation, essentially the, the, the plane itself could take over the duties of the backseater. This way you're not endangering two people. And the alternative is, instead of flying in groups of two, they did start flying these in groups of four. So you still have four pilots out there. It's just, yeah, they're, they're four different birds as opposed to two. Anywho, the first F-16C was delivered to the Air Force in 1991, and the first ones were operationally ready by 1994. In 96, they got a little bit of an update. Nothing major, but color displays in the cockpit. Uh, some uh, video recording equipment was updated. Things of that nature. As for the wild weasels, though, what made these? Well, a few different changes. Now let's take this off the stand. This one still comes with the standard Hobby Master one, but I have it plugged into one of their alternative new ones you can pick up. By the way, here is the smaller and different exhaust of the Parat and the Whitney. And here is the General Electric. Just a little different shape, bigger and everything. Internally, we have a new weapons management computer system, or at least an update to the existing one. And this does lead to some new displays and whatnot in the cockpit. But since the F-16 was designed to be a multi-role fighter in the first place, most of it has to do with its accessories. The two main weapons for attacking air-to-surface, or I should say surface-to-air missile batteries, air defenses, are the high-speed anti-radiation missiles, HARM, or the AGM-88s. Here they are, the center line. Very long and tapered missile. The uh, Wild Weasel F-16 would usually carry two, although it has been tested with up to four. There are also some photos of this carrying one harm and um, one of the older Shrike missiles. But typically it's two harms. It's also worth pointing out that um, the... Uh, F-16C can carry the Harpoon, the AGM-84, anti-shipping missile. Different role, but kind of a similar idea. So yeah, in addition to that, we have two fuel tanks here. And then we have two sidewinders, one on each wing, for defense. This model also came with two M7s. Updated version, or excuse me, I think it was, uh, no, so M20s. I do apologize. I was thinking about another model I got today that was, uh, you'll see in another video. Sorry, M20s, you can put on the wing rails. But I've got so many F16s with things on the wings. I thought leaving this one kind of clean on the wing tips would be kind of neat, so I left them off. It still has two sidewinders for defense, M9s. So that's our offensive capability. In the center line here, we have a self-defense jamming pod. This is actually why I have it on the other stand, so I can utilize the center line. And up here, we have an interesting little pod. This is the HTS, or Harm Targeting System. This, combined with the new flight computer elements allows it to essentially have full autonomy for its harm missiles, full compatibility. Again, helping to make up for the backseater. Now, originally this pod was actually over here on this other side. So yeah, they started to do this. Got these set up. And then in 2005, well, and I should say, when, they're, when they were configured like that, they were known as the F-16CJ. Then in 2005, another upgrade program occurred. It used a new data link system where they could share data between their targeting pods and everything. And this was done to increase range, accuracy, 
and just, you know, group communication. This is called the Link 16 system. Also at this time, they introduced a new helmet with advanced, you know, sight targeting, kind of keeping the pilot's head up and less down and not having to rely on the, the HUD. And at this time, they actually moved the HTS to the, this side here, allowing for a more traditional laser ranging targeting pod to go on the other side. And along with a few other updates, this would become the newer F-16CM. So this is the variant we have here, which is the kind of the update of the F-16CJ. So the Wild Weasel F-16 was used effectively during the Second Iraq War, 2003, to just pulverize Saddam Hussein's air defense network. And they were used again, in, like I said, Operation Odyssey Dawn in Libya in 2011. And they've been used periodically since then. Again, the F-16CJ has given way to the F-16CM, but they're all just upgrades of the same basic airframe. And that's kind of its strength, is it? We're not making a whole new aircraft. It's really just different equipment, a little bit of different wiring, but generally speaking, ready to go. And I think it's just neat. And by this point, they've kind of fully embraced the name Viper, too. And it's still very much the one in service today. But yeah, I just wanted to do this video. I considered it first just making an addendum clip and attaching it to the longer F-16 video. But I thought, you know what, this is different enough. And this is a new model that just got released from Hobby Master. And looking online, it's really difficult to get a lot of information on exactly what it is. I couldn't find anyone that would give the block. So, it's a block 50D. And it does have the Wild Weasel ordinance. Or you can display it clean as more of a display team or demo team role. So you have a couple of options. I think that's why I didn't have the AIM 120s on the wing rails from the box. But you can add them on. They're in there if you want them. And even if you know that it is an F-16CM, the internet's pretty vague on what a CM is. So it is an upgraded CJ with the Link 16 system and a few other other things. One other thing now with changing roles and tactics, while some of these are still just pure wild weasel, some are also sent out with, say, one harm missile and one JDAM or other direct attack munition where they can kind of go not just at the radar sites or the SAM sites, but even other bunkers or installation to really get at the command and communications part of the uh, air defense of a nation. And like I said earlier, these can also carry uh, harpoon anti-shipping missiles. So they definitely are configured for that uh, kind of clearing a path type situation. I don't know, just pretty, pretty pleased with it. So what do you think? It's an F-16, but they make them so many blocks and variants. And again, I really just wanted to get a, a large mouth version with a uh, General Electric engine. Getting one that came with the uh, the harm missiles was just a bonus. And that, you know, the little uh, HTS pod is kind of specific to only the wide weasels here. And it's got a lot of ordnance underneath it. Like most hobby masters, well, pretty much all of them, it comes gear up or down, and can it be open closed, removable pilot figure, removable ordnance. And um, it's pretty much all metal. The wings and the fuselage are, and most of the nose, only the very tip is plastic, and the uh, tail is plastic where all the little detailing is, and of course part of the engine. But it's a pretty substantial model, considering it is... In F-16, which is relatively small craft. 
depending on when you watch this, I will either have or still have to do the major video. So you can check in there for full specs on the aircraft's abilities and to see uh, other variants, including this one over here and some Israeli ones and a few other things. But I just wanted to show you this one today. What do you think? Please, if you could, like, share, and subscribe. And as always, feel free to comment below. This is Misha, and I'll catch you very soon next time.